Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the things I'm looking forward to is seeing our cornfields just take off and grow really fast. But in our society today, we have to have a name for all these things. So they call it fast growth syndrome. Like it's something terrible. That is something terrible. We're, we're going to talk about why it's terrible on today's show. Oh boy, everything's, also, everything's bad, it needs to no, get fixed, isn't it? Well, there are a lot of things that do need to get fixed, like sodic soils. And there are some people that say, oh, I can't do much about sodic soil, just like they'll say, oh, I can't do much about fast growth syndrome in corn. You absolutely can fix your sodic soils, and you can start this year, we'll tell you how. Now, one thing I can agree with you on, Brian, is we need to get our Weed of the Week under control. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about the upcoming Ag PhD Field Day. It's the last Thursday in July, Thursday, July 26th. I know, it seems like it's a long ways off, but believe me, plans are in place, stuff's going in the ground, everybody's excited on our farm to get things ready for the Ag PhD Field Day because we're expecting a huge crowd again and we've got so many new things to show. Well, the reason we do this field day every year is, number one, we just want to thank you for watching Ag PhD TV. This is our 20th year on television. It's also our fifth year on Sirius XM Radio. Thank you. We really appreciate that. And we would love to have you come to our farm and just see some of the research we're doing and also listen to some of the great guest speakers that we've brought in. Well, and when you think about that, Brian, the speakers that, that come in are always high powered, talking about the new things that are out there and the most impactful topics for your farm. And when you think about things that are going to make an impact, there are some new things out there fertility wise and some of these biological products well, are whoa, really whoa, exciting. Whoa. Da Darren's jumping past the guest speakers. We bring some of the best farmers in the world, world record holders to talk about crop production. How can you do a better job in your corn, in your soybeans, in your wheat, in any crop you've got? I think that's awesome. That's one of my favorite parts of the day all the time. Well, certainly, if you want to get better at what you're doing, it helps to ask people who are already doing it, already achieving those higher levels. And that's one of the fun things is it's farmers talking to farmers at our field day. And we get some of the best farmers from around the world, including you, hopefully this year, to come and share what you're doing on your farm and, and talk to other farmers that are there. Okay, Darren mentioned these new technologies. Yes, we will have a whole bunch of plots. We'll show you our research. We'll give you a special guided tour through all of our different plots and show you some, well, I shouldn't even say all of our different plots, a lot of the plots on our main farm there. We have plots going in many different states. We're doing lots of research all the time to try to do a better job for you so we can give you better help all the time so you can be successful on your farm. And the other thing too, it's not just corn and soybeans or something like that at our field day. We'll have probably a dozen crops or more in the ground to show you that day, to show you in cotton, to show you in sugar beets, to show you in edible beans and sunflowers and a number of other things. And also irrigated, non-irrigated. We go through a lot of equipment things. We have live demos and actually a ride and drive area. So this is a big event. We take about a hundred acres out of our farm and it's out of ground that I own. So uh, my, my income isn't real great on those hundred acres. Uh, we, we have to take a bunch of area for plots, a bunch of area for parking and everything, but it's really a lot of fun. We hope you can join us this year. It's Thursday, July 26th. And perhaps the best part about our Ag PhD Field Day is it's free. So you just come and enjoy and learn as much as you can. One thing we would like to have you do as well is please go to agphd.com and pre-register. That really helps us have an idea of who's going to be there. We're expecting 10 to 12,000 people. And the better idea we have through pre-registration, uh, the better we can prepare for that day and have the right amount of food and handouts and everything else for everyone who attends. Again, the Ag PhD Field Day coming up Thursday, July 26th. You can find all the details at agphd.com. One thing I hope that you don't see at the Ag PhD Field Day is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed?
Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 1034-0. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this agro liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent, their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro Liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> Smart farming is playing hockey with my son. Alright, sweetie, are you excited to go? Yeah. <laughs> Smart farming is going on more family vacations. Smart farming is getting some much needed rest. Smart farming is spending more time doing what you love. Make it happen with Farm Command. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We counted. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Once your corn crop gets started, let's say it's about six inches foot tall, maybe two feet tall, you may see some yellow tops in your cornfield. Well, what a lot of people will call that is fast growth syndrome, and they'll think, oh, no big deal, and you get advice like, your crop will grow out of it. Yeah, it will, but you've already lost yield. So here's what we want you to do when you see fast growth syndrome this year. Do some plant tissue analysis and compare the plants that are super green versus the ones that have yellow tops. Our assumption is you're going to find the same thing that we have. It's a nutrient deficiency. It's probably sulfur or one of the micronutrients. All right, I started off the show by teasing Brian that I love fast growth in corn, and I really do, if you've got the nutrients there to feed it. So we've got to deal with these issues as they pop up. When you see that out in your field, don't just think, well, that's a one-year problem. No, you're going to see that year after year after year in that field. Now, you may see some differences between hybrids, and I hear this often that, well, I only saw it in the one hybrid, didn't see it in the other, so I'm just going to switch hybrids, that'll solve my problem. Not necessarily. We do see differences between hybrids in the amount of nutrients that they need at various stages, that varies slightly, and also the root system and the amount of nutrients they're able to bring in. So to me, I would focus on, hey, let's get well-developed roots. Let's find crops that can take those nutrients and push them into our plant quickly, but we can't run short. And if you see that you're running short, you gotta fix it. All right, so a lot of times when you see yellow corn, you're probably thinking nitrogen. Well, don't forget with nitrogen, that's actually mobile in the plant. So in other words, where are the yellow leaves going to be? They're gonna be at the bottom of the plant, not at the top, because the plant can rob it for the new growth. Same thing with potassium. You can see yellowing in the lower leaves, you're not gonna see it on the top. I mean, unless the whole plant was yellow and then you get a disaster. So again, it's going to be sulfur or the micronutrients. And a lot of people will say, oh, I can look at it and tell if it's sulfur deficiency. Look, I've been around for a long time, and I've been in a lot of fields, and I have a difficult time telling. Even if you don't see this deficiency going on in your crop, you may still have it. It's like many other problems on the farm. They don't always show themselves visually. 
they may be happening inside the plant and it's only when it gets to be an extreme deficiency or a really extreme problem that you'll see the visual symptomology. So you're not off the hook if you say, well, I don't see any of that out on my farm. You still need to get out and do some plant tissue testing. See that you're getting the nutrients that you've put on the soil into your plant or see if those nutrients that you think are out in your soil are actually out there and able to get in to help your crop. So today we've been talking about yellow tops in corn. It's often called fast growth syndrome. Do not listen to people who are going to tell you, oh, the plant will just grow out of it. Yeah, it will, but you've already probably lost 50 bushels of yield. That's not a good thing. So at least be tissue sampling, find out what the problem is, start to get it corrected. You can put on some foliar feed this year, but really get your soil fertility program adjusted going forward so you don't see yellow tops and you don't see that nutrient deficiency. One other thing you don't want to see is a tough yield robber like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Enserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. I know a lot of people that have them and I don't know anybody that doesn't like their Morton building. The crew was really in my book top notch. The quality of this building is second to none, and they make sure before you walk away that you're happy. This is my dream barn. I think it ended up looking even better than I thought it would. People love it. When they get in here, they're just in awe. Morton Buildings, for work, for life, for generations. Smart farming is playing hockey with my son. Sweetie, are you excited to go? Yeah. <laughs> Smart farming is going on more family vacations. Smart farming is getting some much needed rest. Smart farming is spending more time doing what you love. Make it happen with Farm Command. Unlock your nutrient investment with Quick Roots technology. It contains two powerful microbes that can help free nutrients bound in your soil, which can improve access to key nutrients for healthy crops, N, P, and K. Applying Quick Roots technology to seed can lead to improved root and shoot growth, increased yield potential, and maximized nutrient investment. See how you can make your fertilizer dollar go further at MonsantoBioAg.com slash quickroots. The buzz on this line is probably the best in 10 years, both in soil and in the plant. Joe, you've been doing this for a while. What's your take? Well, Don, you take a player like High Energy N, three forms of nitrogen, plus sulfur and iron with slow release technology, he's making plays all season long. Oh, look at his numbers. He's getting it done. But don't forget about in response. This guy's designed for a quick release nitrogen. It's looking like another championship season for Agro Liquid. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. How do you fix a sodic soil? Well, first of all, we have to talk about exactly what a sodic soil is. Now, to me, a sodic soil just means I got a bunch of sodium. Sounds pretty simple, but there is a technical definition and there's a few certain factors, so I had to pull out my sheet just so I could remember what they were. Technically, a sodic soil has electrical conductivity less than four. It's got a soil pH greater than 8.5, sodium adsorption ratio of greater than 13, and poor soil physical condition. So if you've got that, you've got a sodic soil. You really had me at sodium, Brian. If you've got a lot of sodium out in a soil, what we end up seeing is that water has a tough time even penetrating and, and absorbing into that soil. Wow, if you can't even get water to get into a soil, you've got some real problems. And then you think about that pH. Sodium has been shown to raise pH about four to one versus calcium. So high calcium soils can be high pH, but a high sodium soil, 
Wow, over an 8.5 pH, we've got a really difficult time getting microbes to survive in an environment like that. All right, I don't care if you have a saline soil, a sodic soil, whatever it is, you've got to start with the root cause of the problem. Yes, there are Band-Aid approaches you can take, but I want to go back to drainage. Get some tile in the ground, and it might take a lot of tile. If you have very heavy soil, you might need tile in the worst sodic spots every 10, 15, 20 feet, something like that. Once you improve your drainage, now we've got to look at your soil test and see what else we have in the ground. Here's what I'm looking for. Do you have high levels of sulfur and do you have high levels of calcium? All right, to get that sodium to move out of the soil, yes, drainage is going to be a big deal but now we've got to get something else to grab onto that sodium to form a salt that we can get to leach down through the soil. Sulfur is one of those things that we hear a lot about that guys want to get sulfur out there, get that to attach to that sodium and get it to move. That's fine. You may have enough sulfur in your soil already. That's why that soil test is so critical. If we've got high levels of, of sulfur out there and we improve the drainage, now we can get things to move and we may be fine just doing the drainage and we're ready to go. Well, you might, but we're talking ridiculously high levels of sulfur. So if you've got a thousand parts per million of sulfur, then yes, you're probably good. The drainage alone is going to fix it. And over the next 10 to 20 years through natural rainfall and normal soil activity, you're going to see the sodium levels really drop. But if you don't have very extremely high levels of sulfur, if you only have, let's say, 50 parts per million, that's not enough. Our suggestion would be get some elemental sulfur out there. The other thing you may consider is the use of gypsum. Let's say that you're low on not only sulfur, but you're also low on calcium. Well, we want to get calcium in that soil too for a couple of reasons. The first and most important reason why is if you have lots of calcium in your soil, your soil has better porosity. In other words, there's more oxygen that's going to move through, more moisture can move through, it's easier to flush salts out of that soil. You want good levels of calcium. The other reason why we want good calcium is calcium is tremendously important for all crop production. So you have to have high calcium. We want over 65% base saturation calcium up to as much as 80% base saturation calcium. That's what we're looking for. So again, if you just have low sulfur, add elemental sulfur. If you have low sulfur and low calcium, use gypsum. So far we've given you a few things to do. Now I'll give you one thing to not do. If you're contributing to the sodium problem, stop! If you're over applying manure, for example, or you're using poor quality water for irrigation, you've got to stop that right now. You can't continue to add more sodium to this equation. A little bit of sodium can become a lot of sodium when you think of the thousands of gallons of irrigation water that go on that field every year. Well, once again, you absolutely can fix a sodic soil. It's going to start by improving your drainage. After that, you got to look at your soil test. You may need elemental sulfur. You may need gypsum. You might not need anything, just the drainage alone, but do everything you can to get that sodic soil fixed. Also, one last thing I'd throw in there, if you want to use some high carbon residue, some straw or something like that, and incorporate that into the ground to get some or organic material out there, that sometimes can help as well. You may be able to identify a sodic soil now, but can you identify our weed of the week? It's coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? Our Weed of the Week is just an annual weed, but boy, it is one of the tougher annual weeds, it's wild oats. 
When you think about this in a wheat crop, for example, you think, oh, that's just one wild oats plant. It's no big deal. I've got five foxtails over here. I better worry about the foxtails first. Nope. That's not right. The research has shown that 10 foxtails are needed to take away as much yield as one wild oats plant. Well, when you've got a plant that is that competitive in your farm, it's got to become a priority in your weed control program. All right, so where we have the most problem with this is typically in wheat. If you're a wheat producer, what we really encourage you to do is start with a good pre-emerge herbicide. The best thing you can put out there is typically prepare that is an ALS chemistry. And I know you might be scared off by ALS products because you say, oh, I have ALS resistant kochia and ALS resistant water hemp. I know, but we're not trying to kill those weeds with the prepare anyway. What we're after here is the wild oats. Now, am I saying you're going to have 100% control with prepare? No way, but you're absolutely going to suppress the wild oats in your field. That's where we really want to start. So I'd be looking at prepare. You can run with a 0.2 ounce reduced rate. Some farmers have been doing that. If you've got higher pH soil, that's probably a good idea. If you've got a normal soil pH, like six and a half or something like that, you can run up to 0.3 ounces of prepare. It's dirt cheap. You're talking five bucks an acre or less. You've got to have good expectations here too. You know, you're going to get suppression, but not 100% complete control. There's still going to be a few wild oats plants. They're going to have to control post-emerge. That's fine. We've used up our ALS product. Now let's go to an ACCA's post-emerge product like Axial. Now there's a number of different products that you could use, but here's the real trick. You don't want to spray your broadleaf herbicide at the same time as your grass herbicide. And the reason why is what we call antagonism. What antagonism really means is by putting that grass killer together with the broadleaf killer, for some reason, we end up with less grass control. That could be a chemical reaction that occurs in the tank. It could be a chemical reaction that, occur, that occurs on the plant. It could simply be that the broadleaf chemistry starts to shut that grass plant down before the grass herbicide gets the chance to move to the growing point. Whatever the case, it doesn't matter. All we know is when you put a grass killer together with a broadleaf killer, wild oats control goes down five to 10 points. Now, is this a big deal if you got 100 wild oats plants in your field? No, I don't care. I'd, I'd tank mix, no problem. If you've got 100 million wild oats plants out there though, that's a whole different deal. Well, that brings us back to that pre-emerge herbicide. That's why it's so critical to get suppression of wild oats. And just reduce, yeah, reduce that population out in your field. Now you've got a little more flexibility for your post-emerge app. Okay, now, can you run with another ALS post? Yes, you can. That's not our recommendation if you've already put prepared down. Uh, could you come with Everest 2.0? Sure, you could, but just understand Everest 2.0 is the exact same chemistry as Prepare, so that's why we really would not encourage you to do that. If you're going to use Prepare Down, which we want you to do, then follow Post-Emerge with Axial or Next Step. All right, in corn and soybeans, we end up using pre-emerge herbicides for foxtail control. They're not highly effective on wild oats, but they will get some suppression. Post-Emerge, though, we've got some good options. Roundup, of course, in Roundup Ready Corn or Soybeans is excellent. Liberty is excellent as well. All right, in soybeans, start with the three pre-program because the yellows are excellent on wild oats. And then you can follow post-emerge with clethodim, just about any volunteer corn killer, Roundup, Liberty, you got lots of options. That's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week Wild Oats. Iron Talk is coming up next. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma. But wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources, the research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. Sure K is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. I know a lot of people that have them, and I don't know anybody that doesn't like their Morton building. The crew was really in my book top-notch. The quality of this building is second to none and they make sure before you walk away that you're happy. This is my dream barn. I think it ended up looking even better than I thought it would. People love it. When they get in here they're just in awe. Morton Buildings. For work, for life, for generations.
In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen. They maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Unlike your nutrient investment with QuickRoots technology, it contains two powerful microbes that can help free nutrients bound in your soil, which can improve access to key nutrients for healthy crops, N, P, and K. Applying QuickRoots technology to seed can lead to improved root and shoot growth, increased yield potential, and maximized nutrient investment. See how you can make your fertilizer dollar go further at MonsantoBioAg.com slash QuickRoots. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We counted. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. There's so many things to know on the farm. One of the basics to add to your equipment knowledge is being able to read and understand the numbers on your tractor tires. It's the topic of today's Iron Talk. First of all, let's say you're looking at a tire with a 420-85 R38. The 420 stands for millimeters of width on that tire, and if millimeters don't mean much to you, simply divide that number by 25.4 to get the number of inches that tire is wide. In this case, it's 16.5 inches. The second number, 85, is the aspect ratio. In other words, this represents the sidewall of the tire. 85 means the sidewall is equal to 85% of the width of the tire. The R stands for radial tire. If instead of R you have a B or a dash, that would indicate you have a bias ply tire. And finally, that last number, the 38, indicates the rim diameter of the tire in inches. So we have a 420-85R38. Now, if you know all that, you're at the head of the class. Here are a few more details you'll want to understand as well. How do tubeless tires work without a tube? That tube, in this case, is actually built into the inner liner of the tire. Another important thing to understand is the standard load index rating of your tire. If you look at this one, it says 144A8 and 141B. The 144A8 means it's designed to carry a load signified by that 144, which translates to a specific number of pounds or kilograms. In this case, it happens to be 6,150 pounds per tire. The A8 means you could carry that load at 25 miles per hour. The 141B means you could only carry a weight of 5,680 pounds per tire if you ran at 30 miles per hour. There's a lot of information on the side of your tires. Take some time this spring to look at and understand the information on them. It may help you avoid a breakdown or some lost time in the field. It'll also help you pick out the right tires for the future. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you can also tune in to our Ag PhD radio show this week. You'll find us each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Soil is nature's filter to keep contaminants out of our water. To learn how farmers manage soil and groundwater, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.